Too much sugar will spoil the cake. Too much rain will ruin the crop. Too much sun will wilt the flower. Hell, any junkie will tell you that too much of something, even if it's the greatest thing in the world, just isn't any good. But the same goes for moderation, I suppose. Too much of it makes for mediocrity. So once in a while, we like a little bit of excess. It's just what we need. Now and then, we need to go on a bender. Now and then, we need to stuff our faces with candies until we vomit. Now and then, we need to dive through the surface of normality and into the depths of madness in order to cultivate our perversions, addictions, and obsessions. Autumn is the season for overdosing on death. As the trees flash their last colors of life, we contemplate our mortality and the terror it engenders within us. In other words, come Halloween, we shoot death hot and fast into the main line. And Pascal Laguerre's 2008 film Martyrs provides just such a fix. As an entry in the so-called New French Extremity Movement, the picture is essentially a nearly continuous series of bloody killings and bloodier tortures. And in the tradition of the torture porn subgenre of horror movies, each method of punishment and killing is giddier than the last. Giddy, of course, isn't quite the right word. The right word for the violence in torture porn would be some combination of gleeful and morbid. In fact, a term should be coined for the ardor with which these films go about their business of filming the fantastical depravities the characters impose upon one another. First someone shot, then someone shot in the balls, and so on. You get the idea. As might be expected by normal cinematic measures, the storyline, narrative arc, and character development of Martyrs are anemic. A girl is tortured and escapes. The tortured girl kills her torturers. The tortured girl gets killed by different torturers. The new torturers move on to torture someone else after revealing to us what all the torture is about. But the film shouldn't be dismissed, and not at all. There are a few interesting ideas stitched into the film's scar tissue. Namely, and what follows here are spoilers, the first act supernatural entity is the manifestation of the guilt the main character harbors for failing to save a fellow victim when she had the chance. And two, the MO of the torturers, a religious cult-like syndicate of apparent sadists, is to produce martyrs in order to better understand what might lie beyond the world of the living. The torturers want answers to big questions, and they think a bona fide martyr might be able to provide them. In hindsight, the plot motivators sound contrived just as an excuse to film 90 minutes of blood splatter and female mutilation, and that might very well be the case, but the revelations play out better than they look on paper, and the violence, for the most part, isn't an exercise in gratuity, at least not to the extent that it would be in lesser films of the genre. Each act of violence in Martyrs does indeed support the tale of torture it's weaving, which is a testament to the acumen of Laguerre. Here he displays remarkable proficiency in the mechanics of his craft. The picture is well shot, the makeup is by all standards incredible, the score is nerve-rending, Real fear is conveyed by his actors, and the hyper-caffeinated Zing Pao editing is right on par with the film's genre contemporaries. But as adept as the mechanics of the picture are, ultimately, it feels little more than mechanical. I watch a film like Martyrs in order to be repulsed, in the exact same way that I ride the Tilt-A-Whirl at Carnival to be dizzy. The effect of the film is visceral, and little more than that. I humbly submit that good storytelling is felt in the heart. Martyrs is felt merely in the body. Effectively so, though, mine kept wanting to reject it the way it reject a maggot-infested organ. Mistaking martyrs for good filmmaking is like mistaking internet porn masturbation for love. Okay, we've all heard the hyperbolic statements about the leagues of not attention span movies like the recent Superman reboot and how watching them feels more like being punched in the gut repeatedly than anything resembling experienced drama. So I won't deliberate over it here, except to say that once in a great while, yeah, we all need to be punched in the guts to remind us that we still have them. Sometimes the body needs to be zapped, and sometimes pain is pleasure. Which is an interesting notion, and one that I think is relevant here. Since Freud, psychoanalysts have chewed over the pleasure of watching, or scopophilia. As theorized, the pleasure of watching, an impulse unique to the human race, is developed in childhood along with the formation of identity. It's the reason why we like to look at beautiful things, a pretty woman or a painting, maybe even a sunset. And it's certainly an impulse very close to those of us mesmerized by the spectacle of cinema. When developed under traumatic circumstances though, so the story goes, the pleasure of watching could lead to reverse watching fixations and their attendant self-destructive obsessions. When watching a film like Martyrs is considered in this framework, what does it mean on a cultural level when our pleasure of watching impulse causes us to cast our collective gaze so obsessively on so much depravity and suffering? Is it a form of self-punishment? 
What does it mean when our pleasures are contorted into self-flagellation? Masochism by movie? I don't have the answers here, but I think maybe the film is posing a similar question. When one of the torturers and martyrs shoots herself after hearing the report of what her martyr has glimpsed in the afterlife, I think that the filmmaker has deliberately constructed a litmus test by leaving her suicide open for interpretation. How we interpret it reveals how we feel about torture porn and the act of watching it. If we think she does herself in because she's disappointed about what she's heard from the martyr, then that means that the torture, the torture that the character on the screen exacted, and the torture we as an audience subjected ourselves by watching the film was for naught a waste of energy and time, a waste of life itself. On the other hand, if we think she kills herself because what the martyr told her about the afterlife is so glorious that she needs to get there right away, even if it means swallowing a bullet, then that means she's been redeemed, that there is justification for the torture. For the character, that justification is the fulfillment of her desire to see Yad. For us, it is the fulfillment of our desire to see suffering. In which case, the whole enterprise is more than just a little underhanded since by the time the litmus test suicide scene plays out, we as an audience have already had to have endured 90 something minutes of torture of watching torture just to be asked the question. But eh, cinema's always been a manipulative art form. And to paraphrase something Haneke said, the true healthy reaction to watching one of my pictures would be to turn it off. <laughs> so in a nutshell, this picture is a damn good fix for those of us who need it during this dying time of year. One that might even be asking us to ask ourselves why we need it. But as a film, Martyrs is just too much sugar that spoiled the cake. Thank you, Mr. Joe Mummy. My pleasure, well, Thomas, and happy Halloween. Hall happy Halloween to you, too. Very, uh, very uh, good intro. Very heady. Uh, it sounded like uh, you were on the fence with this movie for a little while, uh, meaning that you weren't really sure of... Uh, if it, yeah, I have mixed feelings. Yeah, about it. It, uh, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, th so, that's what I'm getting from your intro. Like, it just, it's, you know, it seems like one of those situations where, like, you know, you're really like you're wanting to like it, but you know, again, we're, we're I think we're kind of back to style and s substance, perhaps. Here, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm uh, maybe in a, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, you know, I, I understand the, 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 the appeal for these, the, these types of films. You yeah, know? of course. Uh, so I don't think that they're. Their films really to be enjoyed. They're shocking and repulsive, and it's effective. So, in that sense, you know, it does what it set out to do. So you can't really fault it, you know. But at the same time, I I can't take much of these types of films to be honest with yeah. you. You know what I mean? I, kinda, I don't seek them out. I you know? have a soft spot, not for torture films, but I'm a big fan of home invasion movies. Really big fan. I mean. I've talked before on the show about my, you know, when I found Haneke, I, you know, it was when I found funny games and, you know, that's a, just a brilliant, well, probably the best home invasion movies, but I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, the educators and, you know, what watching, watching this movie, uh, I get drawn in because, because of the home invasion factor, uh, without a doubt, <clears throat> the torture though, Joe is where I kind of, you know, when I'm sitting and watching a film like this and I'm putting, like, my hand in front of my face, do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it's doing. The thing is that this guy does it really effectively. It's, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, he he, he does it really well. He does it really well. Yeah. So uh, it's not, it like, it gets monotonous, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and he brings like, spirituality into it. Yeah, we, uh, a little bit. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It it seems a. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have it. It seemed a little bit contrived to me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. but I mean, I do understand. I I do. It's better than the run of the mill torture porn movies. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, if you're a torture porn fan, I would imagine that this is probably one of the the best of them. One of the best that I've well, seen. Well, Bill Bill brought up a movie on our Bill Shetty brought up a movie during our last review when we were talking about the Blair Witch Project. He mentioned an Asian film called called Audition, which yeah. I've never seen. Now I'm I'm pretty sure you have. Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. I love that movie. Uh, okay, actually. so I, do me do me a solid here if if you don't mind, and just kind of tell me what is going on in Audition that offers 
the audience a little bit more. I'll tell you, there's peaks and valleys and contrast. Okay, elaborate, please. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a continuous... You know, look, I, I can't remember... These guys will be able to tell you the plot of it. Uh, do, oh, a guy, a guy auditioned... I can't give you the plot well, man. It's been a while. Okay. It's been a couple of years since I saw it. Right. So, but but it's it's done where in a film like Martyrs or other torture porn films, it's like not it's nonstop. You know where Mike, what he does is build it on um, you know a structure where there's ascending there's ascend, ascending drama and the heart and the torture. There's like one really nasty torture scene toward the end but there's uh there's a lot of build up a lot of build up in the in the film and a lot of slow moments uh that draw you in and keep you in line like right there empathizing with the main character gotcha what did you feel about that whole supernatural thing that was kind of i really like it look again like in the, the first half it. there's this whole mysterious yeah. woman and that's... i thought it was really neatly done like i was said it mentioned well, where, in the review there what, those two right go on those, yeah those two those two points were really really smart you know they i don't know it just became it became it started just to feel like i was being bludgeoned but i do i do appreciate the psychology behind what what is there with uh that manifestation of our guilt you know right i now i see why bill shetty loved this movie because there's a lot of blood and guts and gore <laughs> and torture and uh what i'm curious to know is uh how dave pace feels about this dave have you screened this before uh when it came out in 2008 or is this the first time you uh you watched this it was the first time i watched it actually and what are you thinking uh it was really intense and it there was a lot of stuff going on throughout that I really like like that jumped out at me. I was making notes like crazy as I'm watching this thing because it's just it's I mean it starts out with this idea that this like that that these traumas kind of kind of haunt us and drive us and 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 can can take over our lives and and then how they how how it affects the people around us look look what happens to her friend right you, you, you know her, her friend gets dragged into this thing and, and has to care for this person and, yeah and and deal with their their madness you know <laughs> and 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 to be willing to to go to the <clears throat> length she's willing to go to for her friend it's it's pretty remarkable right, right? like right. like and and it's like wow that's that's a pretty amazing thing but also the horror of putting someone through that, putting someone through that who obviously cares about you quite a bit, right? And and, and making them go through this this horrific experience and, and and constantly traumatizing them over and over and over again with your your outbursts and your insanity, you know? Like that's it, it was like that stuff was very I found all that like really, really compelling. And I I mean the torture stuff. Yeah, that's... where do you where do you, like? How do you do you agree with Joe that it just <sighs> that's hard, man? Yeah, the, the, like so. I look at this. Um, I, I started to really look at it the same way I look at like a like an ISIS beheading video, hmm. and and I think ISIS beheading videos and and and, and that sort of thing are important. In a sense that I I think if you really want to understand. Um, who that organization is, um, you probably need to sit through one of those. You know, you, you, like like you, to, the reality of it, because you can imagine it. Everybody can imagine the awfulness of, you know, beheading someone. That's awful. Um, but the reality is 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 very different than the imagination. And I think you, you if you really want to know, if you really want to understand it, you got to watch it. You you you. you You've got to face it, uh, and, and to, so to some extent, I think the torture in this film is something you have to face, um, because the what, what, one of the themes that jumps out at me. I mean, besides, you, you know, there's some interesting stuff. You'll notice, you know, when Anna calls her mother, and and her mother starts like, like you know, gets hostile with her and and really starts talking down to her and really just starts like undermining her and and 
you, you that's when the next monster shows up you know that's when she discovers the second girl in the basement you, you, you know yeah. what i mean and, it, yeah. and it's 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 like her, the what her mother fed into her is oh. now what she's going to go and and like okay i'm going to i'm going to go seek a way an escape from that by by putting myself into this other person and trying to heal them and and make them better it, it, it's very like like i found that just very powerful and then when you get to the to the to the torture subplot and you start to realize like sort of what these people are are doing um what became apparent to me is you know when they talk about how uh women are the ones who who suffer the best you know the young women and i like i don't know if you can really argue that you know uh women in our society have suffered horribly you know <laughs> absolutely right. horribly this is my whole goddamn point dave and you were the first person to bring it up you are the first person and the only person to bring it up. This is the whole point of my theme. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry to, you know, <laughs> but, but to me, that's what it like, like, that's what I saw is the suffering. These women, they take on all of this shit that we heap on them as, yeah. as a patriarchal society. And it's so we, crazy how in the horror genre, I am now programmed to be reliant on the women to survive. You look at Marilyn Burns, you look at yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis, mm -hmm. this is the template. You look at Heather. I think about the Blair Witch Project and I think about, there are two, because the, the theme for me was women of dark sacrifice. And yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off, but you got me all no, no, excited. No, no. Please, please. But, but, but in the Blair Witch Project, we lost two amazing women. We lost Ellie, who came to this country in, the, in 1869 to try to make a go of it and yeah. shit went really bad for her and we know what happened to her but then you cut to you know 94 and you've got heather out there in the woods she's being a mom she's being a survivor she's being a filmmaker and she gets sacrificed and it's yeah. just like what is going on with this theme in horror it has been something that is so prevalent it's nuts 100 percent, max and and that's why when i when i think about now, if that's what we're going to talk about, and we're going to we're going to talk about how women suffer, and and how women suffer in order that we get to, frankly, enjoy, you know, better lives, right? And that those better lives are built on the suffering of these, you know, not, not just women, but you know, women, minorities, children, all, all, the, all the, the whole thing. But in, in, in this particular instance, we're looking at the women. And I, and I almost look at this extended torture sequence that follows, which is fucking traumatic uh, to watch. Um, this is where I tie it back into the ISIS video where I say, if you want to understand um, what a, a patriarchal society has inflicted on women, you need to sit and watch this. And maybe you'll get it. Maybe at that point you'll 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 understand. Joe, does this idea open up a new avenue for you about this film? Uh, there are two of them there. So the, I do really appreciate what Matt, Max's theme there and what you guys were talking about is they're sacrificing women for, uh, and then Dave started saying enjoy our society or whatever. I think that. It ties into what's happening with uh, some of the themes that I brought up when I was doing my review there, which is the pleasure of watching. So we put these women on the screen so we can enjoy. There's this perverse pleasure of watching. Well, I don't know who's suffer. enjoying the torturing of these women. I know the four of us weren't. No. So who is well, enjoying Well, it? let me ask you. Well, I think, well, I was. I mean, th there's some dark impulse in us that enjoys watching violence, right? Oh, that's interesting. Well, I think, Joe, fair to say you, that were, is enjoying, interesting. you were enjoying her survival more than you were enjoying the actual. No, I'm talking about actually enjoying watching people suffer. Okay, yeah. No, that is very interesting. <laughs> mm. 
I mean, that's what this is about, right? I mean, and I and I I sort of take. Uh, I w- I would almost. Are, are you talking Dave. about the audience or the? Yeah, okay. yeah, the act of watching this torture. I mean, I think that's what these films are doing. They're putting it in front of you, like Solo. Oh, like and a, this film. Okay, yeah. Like we're sitting. It's put. It's it's putting it like Matt Haneke says. You know, you're you're torturing. Your, you're taking this perverse pleasure in in watching something that makes you uncomfortable. I mean, the that's a that's a really uh, deeply nuanced and dark psychological impulse yeah. that this time that watching that's horror the movies, humanity, uh, yeah. And that's what this and I think that exactly ties into your theme that and what, what, what both of you guys were talking about. You know, film is traditionally a patriarchal, uh, a, a, a male run business. You know, and. It's catering to male audi- male audiences, but especially young male adolescent audiences. So whatever caused the the, uh, the themes and the conventions of horror, one way or another, led to women on screen being tortured. You know, yeah. nonstop, repeatedly chased with mm. long phalluses yeah. that, that never stop. Wow. You know? So these are this is. Uh, I don't mean to bring it back up again, but it's the same thing that was going on with Peeping Tom, where there's this sickness where we, where men especially are very visual, and it has a lot to do with psychoanalysis. I'm sure you guys have, uh, you know, t- uh, read about it or whatever, where, you know, it happens in men. It has to do with the fear of castration and all that forming of identity stuff where it causes us terror. And so, you know, watching, there's this real there's this real uh form of identity that's that's formed when we're watching others and especially women you know and there's this when there's that fear in us turns into you know so all this stuff is wrapped up into that psychology and anger and angst at women that we're constantly brutalizing them on screen and sitting there in the dark alone being full, fulfilled and fortified by you know like our desire. Well, I guess so. it's the fulfillment part. I, I I don't. I mean, I I love what you're saying, but I don't know about the fulfill. I don't know if I feel fulfilled watching. Well, but you enjoy why? I mean, there's something about it. Even I, it's not yeah. enjoying the way that you would enjoy a ice cream cone, right? But there's some. There's I know. Some pleasure. I think I know what you're saying. I I could. I see what. what I'm what's he saying? I in, your, that, in your mind, I think that even if it's uh, even if it even if watching a film like this is going into like really dark and disgusting places within yourself, that you kind of you you you're kind of entertained by it because it's ah oh, geez it's really difficult to explain. There's a power uh, in transgression. Right. Uh, There's a there's a sense of transcendence that comes with with transgression. You you know, there's a there's a sense that um, if I can if I can somehow endure this thing uh, that others can't. You know that others, but would ultimately say, it's you know, safe. I'm not that's, watching that's the this. thing. Like you're watching this. I, I don't and... know. It is safe. Um, well, you're you're I, not being tortured like the person. No, definitely not. But you, I, I, but, no, I, but from I mean, a so from a have... psychological perspective, I don't know that it's right. that it's safe. There's heavy. There's really really heavy themes uh, that are that are at play in this film. And... Did the fanaticism scare you guys at all about that group? They were so desperate to see. Yeah. If there was something beyond did that, because that was for me, and and the you know. That was one of the main reasons I chose this one because that really freaked me out at the end. Yeah, it, I saw them as like governmental or corporate people. Like I just that that's how they kind of came. Interesting. Off. You know, that's like probably more governmental to me. Like you know, they just gave off a major power vibe, and you know, I just felt that in in their hands you have no control. Like. And, you know, they're, you know, they're giving you your outcome. And that's, you know, how if you want to get into, like, you know, politics and government, it it almost seems that that's how it usually plays out in society. So that's how I was kind of like seeing them. You know, they were, you know, very 
power, you know, power esque people to me. And uh, they gave me the creeps. They really did. They felt like Big Brother in in a way, you know. They really... they definitely seem to represent some kind of elite. Yes, there you go. Right, re- regardless of, of whether it was government. But fellas, why is it always yeah. chicks? Why is it always chicks in these movies? What's going on? Well, you know why. Joe, that's, Joe. That's what we're digging at here. Yeah, I'm looking at Joe. Please, Joe. Joe. Help us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to find this uh, article that I was... Well, I, I, I have something, actually. If, Joe, yeah, if Joe's looking here... So I, I, one of my old editors at, at Fangoria, Kayla Janice, uh, she's a brilliant, brilliant uh, author. And she wrote a book, uh, it's a semi-autobiographical well, it's an autobiographical book uh, called House of Psychotic Women. And it's, it's her basically looking at her own life through uh, a bunch of films and looking at her own life through her difficult relationships with her mother, uh, her histories of mental illness, uh, and, and, and being a woman with mental illness and, and sort of what that's like. Uh, and she has, she has a, a, a piece on martyrs in here. And I, I thought maybe oh, wow. a, a, a couple little bits from this would be uh, interesting because the whole book is, is fascinating. It was, what, what really took me aback about it was, um, how similar our backgrounds are in very strange ways. Uh, we were both adopted, and our, our adopted mothers were both nurses. And uh, I, that plays out in very weird ways throughout both our narratives, which is just bizarre and why I'm kind of drawn to this book. But she, she mentions uh, that uh, here in, on uh, page 28... Uh, in the 18th, in the sorry, in the 19th century, there was a popular belief that being close to people on the verge of death brought one closer to God. Hence, people would congregate around the sick and uh, around the sick and dying, hoping to experience a vicarious flicker of divinity. This would later be called the cult of invalidism, uh, and is only one component of martyrs' weird Victorian ethic. Although the director of Martyrs came to know this historical precedent only after making the feature. The film also posits women as more suitable martyrs than men, a notion that is prominent not only in Victorian and Edwardian literature, but most infamously in Japanese cinema as well. The woman sacrifices and endures, ultimately transcending humiliation and debasement, to emerge as a noble and revered creature. Uh, there's another little line here, too, that I, I thought was instructive. And it said, in this film, one woman is very like another. All are equally damaged. But as with any doppelganger film, co- but as with any doppelganger film, coexistence isn't possible for long. One always has to die so that another may live. And... What I was going to say about Dave is that every time he talks, everyone shuts the fuck up. Like, if I talk, I get interrupted 90,000 times. But for some reason, why, when Dave talks, everyone shuts the hell up? Is it because they're multitasking? Or is it because they're utterly intrigued? Because I'm sitting here, I've got my hands over my eyeballs trying to listen to everything. That, it's that so he's... true. I've noticed that, too. And if you listen to our episode, every episode that Dave is on, like, Dave... I allow Dave to go on the longest rants. You do, right? Like <laughs> because Why? It isn't, because I'm hanging on every word. And then I made a mistake tonight, Max, when he in, on, uh, actually last week when I was listening to his it, it follows intro, and I fucking cut him off. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he takes very long pauses, right. Dave. He, as he a does. podcaster programmer, you gotta you gotta. <laughs> she kind of zip it up a little. I mean, bit. I know, I know you're having a, a moment. <laughs> but we don't know what's going on inside that head of yours. But listen, Max, that's a very interesting question. Let's try to deal with one question at a time. Uh, Joe, what do you what do you have? Well, when I was li- when I was doing a little bit of research for Peeping Tom, I I remembered this article that I had read when I was in school by Laura Mulvey called uh, "Visual Pleasure and Narrative." It's really really thick heady stuff but i think i i found a uh, a quote out of it that kind of that quite, kind in. of ties in with what we're talking okay. about 
uh, with which has to do with the act of watching horror and specifically why possibly women are continually, you know, and traditionally the the objects of art of uh, male, you know, killing. Let's hear it. Okay, so all right. So in psychological terms, the female figure poses a deeper problem. She also connotes something that the look continually circles around but disavows. Her lack of a penis, implying a threat of castration mm. and hence unpleasure. Ultimately, the meaning of woman is sexual difference. The absence of the penis as visually ascertainable. The material evidence to the <laughs> symbolical order and the law of the father is all Freud shit. Thus, the woman as icons as icon displayed for the gaze and enjoyment of men the act of controllers of the look always threatens to evoke the anxiety it originally signified so we're watching a woman and we're being threatened by what she represents that there's a possibility that we might not have a penis at some point so the male unconscious has two avenues of escape from this castration anxiety preoccupation with the reenactment of the original trauma uh, which is investigating the woman, demystifying her mystery, counterbalanced by the devaluation, punishment, or save, saving of the guilty object, uh, and having you typified by the concerns of the film noir. Uh, yeah, it's really fucking Wait, so does that, is that saying that the clitoris is less stimulated than the cock? I mean, that's just weird. That's saying uh, that, 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 a, that a pussy doesn't get as turned on as a dick or something. Yeah, that's unfair. Ooh, no, no, it's about the, it's about, it's all about what looking, right? So I think that it has to do with development when you're a child and you're first watching a woman and you see that uh, she doesn't have the same thing. Oh, that I, you see, have. I see. It strikes terror gotcha. into you. So you don't know that they have, there's a, there's a little, you know, fun bag in the middle of that. <laughs> and that stuff. So, so it, it causes you. And so at the same time, it's, ca it's causing you pleasure because it's, you know, it, it's safe to watch. It's, it's safe and you can investigate that mystery. You can uncover that mystery. Wow. And that, but at the same time, it's, it's causing fear. So there's this sort of uh, alternating fear and pleasure principle that's happening. Right. So, you know, when the, when cinema is up there and it's, you know, fulfilling our fears and fantasies, you know, well, I think that uh, it has a lot to do with, uh, the set it goes here a little bit over the second avenue fetishistic scopophilia which is the what? pleasure of looking the fetishistic scopophilia okay. <laughs> builds up the physical beauty of the object transforming into something satisfying in itself so it just becomes this fetishism of of the of viewing and watching you know, and that I think has a lot to do with what what's happening with all. Well, you guys had your quotes. That's really heady shit. It's, so it's okay. It's it's very <laughs> intriguing. But you guys had your quotes, and it's crazy because I had this quote planned before we even started. So, evidently, this film was gonna uh, they were gonna attempt to uh, remake it in America, which obviously is a terrible idea. And the director Daniel Stam, this is a quote. And I got it off Wiki, so I don't know if it's legit, but I, I, I love this quote. The original film is very nihilistic. The American approach that I'm looking at would go through all that darkness, but then give it a glimmer of hope. You don't have to shoot yourself when it's over. Well, guess what, Daniel? That's a movie I don't want to see. So yeah, let's not, not remake wait, Martyrs. What do you say? Wait, what? He said, he said what? He's going to give it a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> this this is happening though. I I think that uh, you know and I was going to bring this up, and I'm glad Max did. Is that this this remake is happening? It's going to happen. No, but it, it, yeah, it, there's happen. an American remake. Another, yes, happen. Dave, you know, it's yeah. going to happen. It's going to have a glimmer of hope. That's yeah. immensely depressing. <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> you know, like because there's no there's absolutely no need. And and I mean, I just I want to jump back to the whole like why women thing for just one second, because I I think it can be pretty simple, too. And it's just that that subjugating women has worked for men for a long fucking time. Uh, and and that's OK with us because uh a, a large degree of us don't really see them as, uh, you know, quite as human as we are. And so we're, we're pretty okay with, you know, dehumanizing them. We feel pretty okay about that uh, as a collective. 
So that I mean, that's really what it what it comes down to. I mean, it's it's the same way we feel about black people. Uh, it's the same way we feel about uh, you know other minorities or <laughs> people who are different than us. He's going off here, Max. Dave, come on. What? <laughs> no, no. That, well, it's it's you... very easy to okay. to say. Well, you know, who cares what happens to that person? Well, they're not really, as human as the rest of them. Yeah, it's dehumanizing. We we got to choose. So keep in mind, we as men got to choose that women were considered human beings. We got to choose that for them. So well, so that, there's a power yeah. imbalance there. You know, right off the bat. There, it's different in other cultures though as well. It's in Western in Western culture for sure. Uh, there are other cultures where, especially in the past, where. Uh, women were actually had more of the power um, figure in in culture, but yeah, we, we in Western Western culture has become uh, a white male based you know ideology, and everybody who else isn't is subjected to dehumanizing principles, so we can you know vilify them. We're talking about Martyrs 2008 here on the Cutting Room Movie Podcast. It's Halloween time. We're having a good time here, man. He's just pretty, <laughs> pretty heady stuff going on, Max. What the, hell? what the hell are you bringing to the table here? Uh, well, let me ask you guys I, a question that I, I asked in the intro. Why do you think that the torturer killed herself at the end? I think, you know, when you wrote that, I... Uh, uh, well, when you when you read that, I wrote down uh, the quote. Keep. Uh, she said something of the effect. Keep, keep doubting. Disab- disbelieving. Yeah, keep doubting. So I thought it was pretty clear what her intention was, Joe. That she felt that this torture resulted in the answer that she was looking for, and she felt pretty confident in that. And in you know, in obtaining uh, that information and. Believing in that information, she decided to do what she had set out to do, and that was to visit uh, another part of existence. So she was justified. So she found redemption in all that torture. I think so. I I, I think so. I thought it was pretty simple and pretty. Well, what if she said keep? What if she said keep doubting because there was nothing on the other side? I, I, like that. it was sarcastic. Like all this was meant for nothing. Like she felt that. That's what I got. Hmm. I didn't. Hmm. I felt the opposite. I thought that she. That's funny too, because I'm sarcastic and I couldn't detect that sarcasm. <laughs> well, no, I don't. I think that it's left in, intentionally ambiguous. Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, of well, some, sometimes good filmmaking is Joe, right? You know. Yeah. I mean that to, to leave it up to the. Uh... Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, I think that was an interesting. I, I, it was the thing that got that I got caught on actually. Yeah. So well, it's a I powerful moment, and like I said, for some reason, I don't know what it was in me after watching that movie. I felt the opposite of what Max was just uh, uh, conveying. That uh, you know, I, I felt that she f- was confident that she was going to move on to somewhere that she was searching for. You know, and doing all this. Uh, that's the hope, <laughs> right, Dave? That they're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> well, <You know? laughs> yeah. I, I mean, shit. We, can you can, could you imagine if she just like whispered in her ear, like, "Hey, there's nothing over there, you crazy bitch." Yeah. Or like, and, and what if she said, "Keep doubting," as like you're right, keep doubting because you you should be doubting yeah, because there's nothing there. That's what Max is getting at. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Max is saying that. That's how you. But not sarcastic, but saying keep doubting because that's the right answer. Is that your doubt is the is right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And and look at this is hopeless. Could, could right. you imagine? I mean, ima- imagine believing this, right? So you you believe this. You believe this to the point where you have like dug out a sub sub basement, um, <laughs> and you have like like got engineers in. I mean, you have to get engineers to make that. You couldn't just make that. <laughs> Right, so you've got like you've had Process. engineers come in. Yeah. Like, did they kill the engineers, uh, or <laughs> is there some engineers somewhere who know? Anyway, I don't want to get too lost in the weeds about the engineers. And all. What I'm, but what I'm saying is, is they went to an extreme amount of trouble just to construct like like that place, right? 
and 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 they got like surgeons and like medical equipment. Like right. they need a medical device license. Well, they started off. They started off sloppy though, Dave. Fifteen years well, earlier, I mean, we true, saw what happened. True, but they were I'm, less organized. They definitely got their their things together. But my point is, is could you <laughs> could you imagine? And, and and then of course they they just start like you know feeding women into the grinder there, and when and I guess children. They tried a lot of things, right? So they tried women and children and all kinds of stuff, and find the women like work the best. But I mean, all that trouble. But I mean, just, just imagine <laughs> wow. you did all this stuff and, right. and did all these horrific things. And, and, and maybe you were like, man, this is horrific and I hate this. But if it leads to, you know, what I'm hoping it leads to, this will all be worth it. And then it's not like, because yeah. it, it's not like, it's not like, well, we wasted some taxpayer money and, you know, whatever it's like oh we murdered a whole bunch of people in horrific yeah. nightmarish ways and right and, uh, and for no reason for no like, <laughs> and what about just the idea Man. that that you're devoting an entire existence your entire life to because you have such most likely a big fear of death or just a worry about death that you need to know you know you need, you need to know what happens when you die, you see, like, they're not living their lives. They're just worrying about what happens at the end. And that, to me, is kind of... All they're doing is being proactive for what uh, real, other uh, religious people do. They, and they're, <laughs> other, uh, all religions are just lazy. The, these these <laughs> people just aren't lazy. All the other religions, they just believe that they know <laughs> without even testing right. it. These, these people they're actually have to get scientific to about it. Yeah, they at least had the gumption to go out and do something about it. And get you know, get their get their hands dirty. Listen, <laughs> listen, God God helps those who helps themselves. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we're going to begin to wrap things up. It was a great uh, Halloween experience this year. I had a lot of great fun. It was great to have Bill Shetty on during our Blair Witch Project uh, conversation. It was great to talk to uh, Eduardo Sanchez the co-director of the Blair Witch Project. You can check that interview out right next to this episode at the Cutting Room Podcast.com. We're going to wrap things up now and say goodbye in just a couple minutes. Any parting words from Max, Joe, or Dave? Let's hear it. Max, I know you got something. you got to be holding something back. Oh, I've been holding back all night. Happy Halloween. This was a lot of fun. Bill Shetty's hilarious. And uh, thanks for the awesome intros, guys. All three of you top shelf i loved your films this year and i hope that uh that if we're if we're still doing this next year and i you know max i i hope you continue like no i will i will have quit the show by then definitely yes without a doubt yes okay so you're making an announcement here right now no i'm not making an announcement. <laughs> i will be out of your hair by next year so good luck with whoever's going to plan your Halloween show because I'm sure it's going to be great. So we've lost Joe in one evening. We're losing Dave and Max. <laughs> I <laughs> swear to God, God and I kept Billy off the show. I kept Billy and Adam. They want to be on the show. Bring, bring Billy and Adam in, man. You've got your foursome. <laughs> oh my God. You're so horrible tonight, Max. <laughs> what? Oh, I have been so nice and awesome. Uh, well, thanks for going out of your way, Max. Truly, you want to have an argument real quick, Max? <laughs> With that you feel about it? Oh, I want to go. I want to go urinate and go watch. <laughs> Most likely, once again, the Blair Witch Project because just talking about it made me want to go see it again. Yeah, I had a really wow. good time watching these movies and talking yeah. about these movies with you guys tonight, man. I really appreciate it. Let's wrap things up. Uh, Let's do Max first. Max, uh, you can check his blog, maxcookuncork.com, and follow him at Max Cook Official on Twitter. Check out Joe's film work at christianaproductions.com. Joe, plug those two horror movies real quick. Yeah, the Halloween movies. The Nightmare and Meat Cycle. I'll po put them on the post here. And Dave, you, uh, you have anything? Joe, I love those. Yeah. Dave, anything I you want to throw out the there? I Meat Cycle again. Dave. What's that? You did? Oh, yeah. I fucking love the meat cycle. I, oh, it's thank so you. It's fucking great. great. It's so beautiful, Joe. It's beautiful. And the fact that Let's make did... a movie, Max. Let's make a fucking All right. movie. Hey, Pace, you want to plug the uh, that Green Inferno podcast you were on? Uh, Yeah, sure. I mean, Joe, no, actually, I don't. I don't want anybody to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I wish I, Dave, coming. I drove, Dave, I drove through, I'm sorry, Tom, it's, you want to go? No, do it real quick. Okay, I drove through Canada, actually, this, uh, this <laughs> no, summer, shit, and I was thinking oh, about shit. you, man. I would have loved to meet you, dude. I really want to meet you. At, like, a random weird gas station, like a sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> I drove right through, ha you, you live in or near Hamilton, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh man, it would be so fucking good if I just showed up and like I was ridiculously like geared up. I had an RV with my family and my dog. Oh my it would have been so, it would have been so fucking funny yeah, if, I, if I knew where you lived. I would have been like, hey, Dave, it's <clears throat> Joe Cristiano from the Cutting Room Movie Podcast, man. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> you would have been like, get the fuck <laughs> live from Joe's RV. Yeah, I don't really want to meet up with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You know the music is normally done by the Zillatones. Uh, www.thezillatones.com or search for them on Reverb Nation. This, this, this week, week we have it's uh, it's Sano Print yeah. and Mikolai we Mikolai Weaver. He's a great uh, score writer, great musician, and he did the the uh, music from almost all my my short films. So, uh, any filmmakers out there, he's looking. He, he'll help you out, especially with dark stuff. So, sound print. The Cutting Room Movie Podcast is brought to you by Christiana Productions and New Media Limited. It's edited by Joe Shrek and Joe Christiana. And we also like to throw a little shout out to our little friend Jeremy Garcia of Dartboard Cinema. He handles all of our social networking, and he's just an awesome kid. And we'd like to thank him a lot once again for participating this season. Uh, with that in mind, you can follow me on Twitter, Thomas Detloff at TCRM Podcast. Happy Halloween, everyone. I'd like to thank Joe Mummy, the California Chainsaw Massacre, dangerous Dave Pace, and of course, Bill Shetty for popping in, and Mr. Eduardo Sanchez for giving us an interview about his film, The Blair Witch Project. Next week, we're back, and I'm programming the next couple weeks, and we're going to be doing a theme, stand-up comedy. Misery Loves Comedy is next week. That's Kevin Pollack's documentary about being a stand-up comedian. The following week, we're going to be doing The Jimmy Show, directed by Frank Whaley and The King of Comedy. Until then, we're over and we are out. Happy Halloween and ciao. <laughs> You survived the cutting room floor. It's pretty remarkable, right? right? Like, right. like, and and it's like, wow, that's that's a pretty amazing thing. But also the horror of putting someone through that, putting someone through that who obviously cares about you quite a bit, right? And 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 making them go through this this horrific experience and 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 constantly traumatizing them over and over and over again with your your outbursts and your insanity you know like that's it, it was like that stuff was very i found all that like really really compelling and i i mean the torture stuff yeah, that's, where do you where do you, like? How do you do? You agree with Joe that it's just that's hard, man. Yeah, the, the, like so. I look at this. Um, I, I started to really look at it the same way I look at like a like an ISIS beheading video, hmm. and and I think ISIS beheading videos and and and, and that sort of thing are important in a sense that I I think if you really want to understand. Um, who that organization is, um, you probably need to sit through one of those. You know, you, you, like like you, the reality of it, because you can imagine it. Everybody can imagine the awfulness of, you know, beheading someone. That's awful. Um, but the reality is 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 very different than the imagination. And I think you, you if you really want to know, if you really want to understand it, you've got to watch it. You you you, you you've got to face it. Uh, and, and to, so to some extent, I think the torture in this film is something you have to face. Um, because the, what, what, one of the themes that jumps out at me, I mean, besides, you, you know, there's some interesting stuff you'll notice, you know, when Anna calls her mother and, and her mother starts like, like, you know, gets hostile with her and, and really starts talking down to her and really just starts like undermining her and, and, 
you, you that's when the next monster shows up you know that's when she discovers the second girl in the basement you, you, you know right. what i mean and it, yeah. and it's 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 like her, the what her mother fed into her is oh. now what she's going to go and and like okay i'm going to i'm going to go seek a way an escape from that by by putting myself into this other person and trying to heal them and and make them better it's very like like I found that just very powerful, and then when you get to the to the to the torture subplot and you start to realize like sort of what these people are are doing, um, what became apparent to me is you know when they talk about how uh, women are the ones who who suffer the best you know the young women and. I like I don't know if you can really argue that. Too much sugar will spoil the cake. Too much rain will ruin the crop. Too much sun will wilt the flower. Hell, any junkie will tell you that too much of something, even if it's the greatest thing in the world, just isn't any good. But the same goes for moderation, I suppose. Too much of it makes for mediocrity. So once in a while, we like a little bit of excess. It's just what we need. Now and then, we need to go on a bender. Now and then, we need to stuff our faces with candies until we vomit. Now and then, we need to dive through the surface of normality and into the depths of madness in order to cultivate our perversions, addictions, and obsessions. Autumn is the season for overdosing on death. As the trees flash their last colors of life, we contemplate our mortality and the terror it engenders within us. In other words, come Halloween, we shoot death hot and fast into the main line. And Pascal Laguerre's 2008 film Martyrs provides just such a fix. As an entry in the so-called New French Extremity Movement, the picture is essentially a nearly continuous series of bloody killings and bloodier tortures. And in the tradition of the torture porn subgenre of horror movies, each method of punishment and killing is giddier than the last. Giddy, of course, isn't quite the right word. The right word for the violence in torture porn would be some combination of gleeful and morbid. In fact, a term should be coined for the ardor with which these films go about their business of filming the fantastical depravities the characters impose upon one another. First someone shot, then someone shot in the balls, and so on. You get the idea. As might be expected by normal cinematic measures, the storyline, narrative arc, and character development of Martyrs are anemic. A girl is tortured and escapes. The tortured girl kills her torturers. The tortured girl gets killed by different torturers. The new torturers move on to torture someone else after revealing to us what all the torture is about. But the film shouldn't be dismissed, and not at all. There are a few interesting ideas stitched into the film's scar tissue. Namely, and what follows here are spoilers. The first act supernatural entity is the manifestation of the guilt the main character harbors for failing to save a fellow victim when she had the chance. And two, the MO of the torturers a religious cult-like syndicate of apparent sadists, is to produce martyrs in order to better understand what might lie beyond the world of the living. The torturers want answers to big questions, and they think a bona fide martyr might be able to provide them. In hindsight, the plot motivators sound contrived just as an excuse to film 90 minutes of blood splatter and female mutilation, and that might very well be the case, but the revelations play out better than they look on paper, and the violence, for the most part, isn't an exercise in gratuity at least not to the extent that it would be in lesser films of the genre. Each act of violence in Martyrs does indeed support the tale of torture it's weaving, which is a testament to the acumen of Laguerre. Here he displays remarkable proficiency in the mechanics of his craft. The picture is well shot, the makeup is by all standards incredible, the score is nerve-rending, real fear is conveyed by his actors, and the hyper calf audience have already had to have endured 90-something minutes of torture of watching torture just to be asked the question. But, eh, cinema's always been a manipulative art form. And to paraphrase something Haneke said, the true healthy reaction to watching one of my pictures would be to turn it off. <laughs> so in a nutshell, this picture is a damn good fix for those of us who need it during this dying time of year. One that might even be asking us to ask ourselves why we need it. But as a film, Martyrs is just too much sugar that spoiled the cake. Thank you, Mr. Joe Mummy. My pleasure, Thomas, and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you, too. Very, uh, 
Very uh, good intro, very heady. Uh, it sounded like uh, you were on the fence with this movie for a little while, uh, meaning that you weren't really sure uh, if it... Yeah, I have mixed feelings. Yeah, about it. It, uh, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, th- that's what I'm getting from your intro. Like, it just, it's, you know, it seems like one of those situations where, like, you know, you're really, like, you're wanting to like it. But, you know, again, we're, we're I think we're kind of back to style and s- substance, perhaps. Here, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm oh, maybe in a, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, you know, I, I understand the, 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 the appeal for these, the, these types of films. You yeah, know? of course. Uh, so I don't think that they're, they're films really to be enjoyed. They're shocking and repulsive, and it's effective. So, in that sense, you know, it does what it set out to do. So you can't really fault it, you know. But at the same time. I, I can't take much of these types of films, to be honest with yeah. you. You know what I mean? I, kinda, I don't seek them out. I know? have a soft spot. Not for torture films, but I'm a big fan of home invasion movies. Really big fan. I mean, I've talked before on the show about my, you know, when I found Haneke, I, you know, it was when I found Funny Games. And, you know, that's a just a brilliant well, probably the best home invasion movies but i'm a big fan of uh you know the educators and you know what watching watching this movie uh i get drawn in because because of the home invasion factor uh without a doubt <clears throat> the torture though joe is where i kind of you know when i'm sitting and watching a film like this and i'm putting like my hand in front of my face do, do you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it's doing. The thing is that this guy does it really effectively. It's, you know what yeah, I mean? Like he he, he does it really well. I he agree. does it really well. Yeah. So uh, it's not it like it gets monotonous. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and he brings like, spirituality into it. Yeah, With, uh, a little bit. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It it seems a. i have it it seemed a little bit contrived to me you know what i mean like Uh, but i mean i do understand i i do it's better than the -the run-of-the-mill torture porn movies absolutely you know what i mean so if you're a torture porn fan i would imagine that this is probably one of the, the best of them one of the best that I've well, seen. Well, Bill Bill brought up a movie on our Bill Shetty brought up a movie during our last review when we were talking about the Blair Witch Project. He mentioned an Asian film called called Audition, which yeah. I've never seen. Now I'm I'm pretty sure you have. Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. I love that movie. Uh, okay. Actually. So I, do me a do me a solid here if if you don't mind. And just kind of tell me what is going on in Audition that offers the audience a little bit more i'll tell you there's peaks and valleys and contrast okay elaborate please uh so i mean it's not a continuous you know look i i can't remember these guys will be able to tell you the plot of it Uh, oh a guy a guy audition i can't give you the plot well man it's been a while it's been a couple years since i saw it so but but it's it's done where in a film like martyrs or other torture porn films it's like not it's nonstop, you know, where Mike, what he does is build it on, um, you know, a structure where there's ascending, there's ascend, ascending drama and the heart and the torture. There's like one really nasty torture scene toward the end. But there's uh, there's a lot of buildup, a lot of buildup in the in the film and a lot of slow moments uh that draw you in and keep you in line and ch- like right there empathizing with the main character gotcha what did you feel about that whole supernatural thing that was kind of i really like it look again like the in the first half it. there's this whole mysterious yeah. woman and that's... i thought it was really neatly done like i said it mentioned well, in where, the review there what, those two right go on those, yeah those two those two points were really really smart you know they I don't know. It just became. It became. It started just to feel like I was being bludgeoned. But I do. I do appreciate the psychology behind what what is there with uh, that manifestation of our guilt. You know. Right. I, now I see why Bill Shetty loved this movie because there's a lot of blood and guts and gore <laughs> and torture. And uh, what I'm curious to know is uh, how Dave Pace feels about this. Dave, have you screened this before uh, when it came out in 2008, or is this the first time you uh, you watched this? 
It was the first time I watched it, actually. And what are you thinking? Uh, it was really intense, and it there was a lot of stuff going on throughout that I really, like, like that jumped out at me. I was making notes like crazy as I'm watching this thing, because it's just, it's... I mean, it starts out with this idea that this, like, that that these traumas kind of kind of haunt us and drive us and 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 can can take over our lives and and then how they how how it affects the people around us. Look look what happens to her friend, right? You, you, you know, her her friend gets dragged into this thing and and has to care for this person. And, yeah, and and deal with their their madness, you know, <laughs> and and. And and to be willing to to go to the <clears throat> length she's willing to go to for her friend, it's painted. Zing Pao editing is right on par with the film's genre contemporaries, but as adept as the mechanics of the picture are, ultimately it feels little more than mechanical. I watch a film like Martyrs in order to be repulsed, in the exact same way that I ride the tilt a whirl at carnival to be dizzy. The effect of the film is visceral, and little more than that. I humbly submit that good storytelling is felt in the heart. Martyrs is felt merely in the body. Effectively so, though, mine kept wanting to reject it the way it reject a maggot-infested organ. Mistaking martyrs for good filmmaking is like mistaking internet porn masturbation for love. Okay, we've all heard the hyperbolic statements about the leagues of not attention span movies like the recent Superman reboot and how watching them feels more like being punched in the gut repeatedly than anything resembling experienced drama, so I won't deliberate over it here. Except to say that once in a great while, yeah, we all need to be punched in the guts to remind us that we still have them. Sometimes the body needs to be zapped, and sometimes pain is pleasure. Which is an interesting notion, and one that I think is relevant here. Since Freud, psychoanalysts have chewed over the pleasure of watching, or scopophilia. As theorized, the pleasure of watching, an impulse unique to the human race, is developed in childhood along with the formation of identity. It's the reason why we like to look at beautiful things, a pretty woman or a painting, maybe even a sunset. And it's certainly an impulse very close to those of us mesmerized by the spectacle of cinema. When developed under traumatic circumstances though, so the story goes, the pleasure of watching could lead to reverse watching fixations and their attendant self-destructive obsessions. When watching a film like Martyrs is considered in this framework, what does it mean on a cultural level when our pleasure of watching impulse causes us to cast our collective gaze so obsessively on so much depravity and suffering? Is it a form of self-punishment? What does it mean when our pleasures are contorted into self-flagellation? Masochism by movie? I don't have the answers here, but I think maybe the film is posing a similar question. When one of the torturers and martyrs shoots herself after hearing the report of what her martyr has glimpsed in the afterlife, I think that the filmmaker has deliberately constructed a litmus test by leaving her suicide open for interpretation. How we interpret it reveals how we feel about torture porn and the act of watching it. If we think she does herself in because she's disappointed about what she's heard from the martyr, then that means that the torture, the torture that the character on the screen exacted, and the torture we as an audience subjected ourselves by watching the film was for naught a waste of energy and time, a waste of life itself. On the other hand, if we think she kills herself because what the martyr told her about the afterlife is so glorious that she needs to get there right away, even if it means swallowing a bullet, then that means she's been redeemed, that there is justification for the torture. For the character, that justification is the fulfillment of her desire to see Yad. For us, it is the fulfillment of our desire to see suffering. In which case, the whole enterprise is more than just a little underhanded since by the time the litmus test suicide scene plays out, we as an